other um, to task at the council level. What's that? Neither were allowed. Neither were allowed, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, either way, you know, that, I mean, that came out of a very specific circumstance. Uh, and, um, and I don't know what, um, that you do have these few um, retailers who do have second floor locations around the square, like Salon Pure in the case of Palmer Square, and there may indeed be a language school up at 20, uh, 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 at, um, 20 Nassau Street and whatever, who, who do have specific needs. So I think, you know, certainly visiting it and talking about it is one thing. You know, restricting it too much, I think, would be a pity, but my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Joshua Zinder. I'm an architect here in town. I'm also a member of the Merchant Association. Um, so there are a number of issues, I think, with signage in our town that can be improved. Um, I think that if you look at Princeton, there's a rich history of signs that run perpendicular to the line of travel. And I think they added to the fabric and texture of our town. And part of the reason why you need the sandwich boards now and part of the reason why shop owners want that sort of extra touch is because they've lost um, this uh, graphic that runs perpendicular to the line of travel. So as somebody walks down the street, right now a sign can be on the building or it can be on an awning, but it can only be on the face of the awning. So if you're walking on the street, you will never see the awning sign. If you're walking on the street, it'll be foreshortened, their sign will be foreshortened to them. So it's a natural desire to want to have another touch, a little bit of hospitality that you're trying as a shop owner to get to the people who are walking by. And I actually think that the solution, if you're really serious about getting rid of the sandwich boards, is to really take a close look at the signage in the community and look at how you can extend and let, let the, the merchants in town sort of extend that extra level of hospitality. Look at signs perpendicular to the line travel. You know, you're not allowed to put a sign on the side of an awning. It's those little things that help and help bring the people into town and help bring the people into the stores once they are in town. And that's really what, what I think it's all about. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question about that? Did, Josh, did you say we took away the perpendicular? We, we've never had that. No, you, we've had that. There are extensive. You, if you want to go into town, never it's, had it. it, it pre, that's not true. It, you're right. You're absolutely right. Not for the last 50 years. It, the, when the ordinances were established, okay, in an attempt to get rid of neon signs, as far as I understand, from what I've read and heard about this, they eliminated the ones that were perpendicular. However, there are numerous images of our town with signs that run perpendicular to the line of travel. I mean, look at Lahares, right? Lahares is a sign that's perpendicular to the line of travel. It's one of the ones that's left over, right? So now we have a, a building that has the name of a restaurant that doesn't exist anymore on the front of the t on the front of the building, and they can't put the new s sign on there because because it's prohibited. I mean, it's just sort of a little ridiculous. But, but isn't the freestanding sign a perpendicular sign? I'm thinking of the one. Isn't that perpendicular? Yes. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's the, that, and that predates, an and that's free of the building that stands out in front of the building. So it's a, yes, it's a completely different thing. But you know, you can't see the, you can't see those small A-frame signs okay, so any with, distance with the anyway. You're so right. It's not the A-frame signs aren't about they're not not about getting the person who's driving by or somebody who's three blocks away. It's about, and I can tell you that, you know, I've done this walking by Origins. I've looked, I've seen their specials. I walked in, I've gotten something for myself, for my family. You know, it, it's about that, that impulse, right? You see something, the merchants are trying to be hospitable. It's about hospitality. It's about that touch. You want to be able to bring people in. And then people who are just walking through our community are going to say, you know, Princeton was great. The people were so friendly. I got that great thing at that store, the great thing at that store. And they don't even realize that they've been brought into our community when they're walking by. Now, I can understand that you might want to regulate those signs, just like you regulate where people put in seasonal seats out in front of restaurants and things like that. You know, if there are really issues about them blowing over and if there are really issues about people finding them unsightly, there are ways of controlling that. You can have them be anchored down. They don't have to fall over. And there are lots of ways to do that. And you can also, 
say that they can be in this space in front of, in front of the, the stores. They don't have to be randomly scattered around. You have the ability to control it. I mean, if that's what you're looking at doing, but I think taking them away, I think, is really, it's a detriment to the character of our community and who I think we want to be. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Ted Horodinsky, Princeton Computer Repair and Tutoring. I'm a little confused. There's been some reference to the borough and the township. I thought there was consolidation and that neither exists anymore. But um, Ms. Cromiller, you made reference to um, contractor sign ordinances not being permitted in Princeton Township. Um, my recollection is that they were permitted uh, under the following procedure. An application, a, a, a very simple application was filled out at the, and a drawing of a contractor sign in relation to the property upon which it was proposed to be placed, in addition to a uh, permit fee if the application had been approved. So are you aware of that? Uh, I, mean, but, I mean, one thing, just to be clear, right now, the, the for, I should have said former whenever I say it, but the former township and the former boroughs ordinances are in place right now. So the, the former township right now um, either regulate, I thought it didn't regulate it, but wrong about that. I'm, I'm not aware of that procedure, Derek. Are you? No. Oh, I can, keep, I can give you copies. I have copies of all the permits that I applied for and, and got approved. Although with the exception, uh, with all due respect to Mr. Bridgers, my uh, familiarity with his borough procedure was that um, there was no paperwork required and it was please May, may I finish, please? May, may I finish? May I finish? <clears throat> I, will, I will gladly present to council copies of the permits that were issued to me by the township. Um, <clears throat> there was a, a woman by the name of Annie. Um, she was one who was at the window who took my permit, and, uh, but it wasn't Mr. Bridgers who well, was I, I overseeing it. The process we're doing right now is harmonization of the ordinances. So. Ms. Crumiller's report came from what's written on the books, and so I'm not sure what the practice was, but we have to go by what's written on the books, and yeah. we just want to have a really good procedure moving forward. So in some ways, it's yeah. it's not 100% relevant to what we're trying to do now, right. which is to look at what's on the books for the former township, what's on the books for the former borough, and what do we want as we move through this harmonization process. But I do want to say, I do think you're right, because I also um, remember a while ago getting a permit in the township. <laughs> so, so actually, for I do think that might have been in the past, that there were, you could get permits for the right-of-way, but I think most of us don't. Oh, I, that I, doesn't I, mean we're going to consider doing that. No, um, I didn't say that there was a, a process for allowing a contractor sign in the right of way. No, J just the placement of a sign on private property, oh, okay. period. Mr. Bridgers had said to me, uh, if you place the sign, do not place it in the right of way, and when you're finished your contractor work, remove it. He made it very simple. And that was, it's the township who required the paperwork. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, and this is not about parking signs. Hendricks Davis, John Street, and I am a realtor here in Princeton. Did your conversation, uh, 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 it, it did cover um, signs, A-frame signs uh, that realtors, I confess, uh, use uh, to advertise open houses and that sort of thing? We didn't discuss that in our ordinance. Good, don't, because we are. 
Well, we did but say no, 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 I, I think a, no this, signage in the public right away. Right, we did say, right, like uh, no signs. You, right, yeah. so. Well, you'll, you will find that, that uh, many real estate uh, concerns, uh, brokerages use uh, signs, and they do put them sometimes in the public right of way. But my experience is that uh, realtors self-regulate, and the signs are up for a limited amount of time, and some brokerages actually impose fines upon their uh, their sales associates if those signs are not taken down immediately after uh, a uh, an open house. Uh, I think that they actually uh, do serve a public good because uh, actually uh, some guy did a study fairly scientific to show that you drive business to properties even more if you have they said eight signs out so some companies actually specify that amount spread throughout but we self-regulate and we are responsible uh, and mandated to pick those signs up immediately afterwards and I think the the, the public good is that you do want uh, your taxpayers to uh, have uh, the opportunity to uh, you know sell their houses and move on and bring new people into the community and that sort of thing so I would uh, if you haven't considered it don't if we're okay, great. We will continue to self regulate. Well, I, I did want to get an update from Mr. Bridger then yeah. about how what what the ordinances say about that it, now. It just permits one real estate sign per each community per property. So. But that's on the property itself. On the property. It right. doesn't speak to signs off the property. But what, Derek? What would you suggest? Because I kind of agree that well, open house signs—they are usually just for a few hours. Yeah, they're usually on Saturdays when I'm not around, or uh, <laughs> you know. so we just keep it that way. No, I, Sundays. I, I think you have to strike a balance. It's like yeah. with the the signs in the public right away. It's a sign in the public right away, and you know how do you distinguish that between that and a sign for a public school or a, you know yeah. a cancer fundraising drive? So yeah, right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Chip Cherry, Tony for Dempsey. Um, I have to say I like signs. They make our town lively. Things are happening. I don't mind seeing a 10K sign. I don't mind seeing that the Waldorf School is open for open house. That's what makes us alive. To take away all of our signs, it's sort of deadsville. So I, I think you really need to think this thing through. Now you might say, well, a sign has to be three feet away from the edge of the street or something like that uh, to give a little contour. But uh, I think our signs are a lot of fun, and I don't, I don't think we should not have signs. Thank you. Does anybody else want to speak about signs? OK. All right, well, I want to thank the Code Review Committee again for, um, for your work on this. And um, I would encourage you to set up a time to meet with the merchants um, to get some feedback there. And then depending on what you hear, um, we can talk about either having another more informal session at council or to come back with an ordinance if you feel like you're you're ready and it's better to have something more specific in front of us. We'll okay. Definitely do that. Okay, thank you. Um, and now we're gonna move on to um, our public hearings. We have um, two public hearings this evening. The first one, an ordinance by Princeton appropriate appropriating the sum of $600,000 from the Princeton Open Space Trust Fund and authorizing the acquisition of Block 15.02, Lot 71 and 72, Princeton Township Tax Map, pursuant to the provisions of the New Jersey Local Land and Buildings Law, NJSA 40A 12-1, et sec. And um, I don't know if... Ms. Butler, you want to um, speak to this, or um, and if Deanna, do you want to explain? Just because I know there's been a lot of questions from the earlier comments. Well, I was in the, I can start. I was in the Historic Preservation uh, Commission meeting this afternoon, and the subject of 3133 Lytle Street came up, and I they did pass a resolution uh, in favor 
encouraging uh, that the building be saved and that we, the municipality, try to purchase the building for purposes other than, um, well, n purchase the property with the house intact, which this does not, um, that's not the ordinance before us tonight, but um, they spoke about the importance of the Lytle Street house and the value of it, and that um, it's one of the better houses in the neighborhood that's identified in an earlier um, review of historic properties within the Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood. Um, they suggested that it could possibly be used for uh, affordable housing, uh, even though you know we were not clear that we have money in our affordable housing trust because we have a couple of other projects ongoing. But um, you know they, they were quite adamant that the council municipality try to save it. Okay. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can't use the county money to save it, right? The county money that we're getting is for only open space. for... Yes. That's um, possibly not clear. Not uh, it might be that we can use some open space money. Uh, That's of the town's open space, but the county is is a partner in this. Right. And there was a suggestion that perhaps the county historic preservation might have money that would help, um, that would be a resource when we said that, you know, that this is open space money being used for this and that would, you know, it's for, for an empty lot. Um, they suggest, someone made the suggestion that there might be money available in the County Historic Preservation Fund. Well, I mean, can I, I mean, We're going to open a public hearing in a second, but I just want to start with um, council questions and presentations. Should, should I, I just want to, just want, if I can, um, I, I think that a lot of us um, uh, up here are concerned about affordable housing, and we've, we've spent, I guess, within the last two months, almost a million dollars, I guess, within affordable housing, which is the most we've spent in a, in a while. Um, and I think we're concerned. I think the Affordable Housing Task Force has been set up to look at various sites and uh, places that we can um, create more affordable housing um, in Princeton. Um, I've said over and over again that we were the, uh, the leaders and people like Mayor Floyd um, back in the day um, by help starting a, a Princeton um, community uh, a village and Princeton community housing uh, one affordable housing um, you know one of the greatest affordable housing developments that we have and I do think affordable housing is something that we need to keep a diverse community affordable housing is something that I I, I strive for um, and and I, I agree with 100% um, in this circumstance, um, I will say, and, and I was one of the, the ones that was champion um, expanding Mary Moss Park, there were a lot of reasons why. One, we mentioned earlier that the property was going to be um, purchased and, and torn down um, before we even um, jumped on the notion of having this, this idea of expanding the, the park. Um, the developer was that basically we're going to tear down and build a I don't know, another McMansion or whatever they call their homes today, um, two, two homes um, on, that, on that, that one site. Um, so we, we felt that, that the good of, of the community, and the good of the community is something that we're looking at not just for today, but we're looking at for 20 years down the road. We're looking at, at young people, um, youngsters. We're looking at families. We're looking at trying to build a community, and, uh, community back. You know, years ago, you would go down the streets of Lee Avenue, John Street, Birch Avenue, Lytle, and you would know the names of your neighbors uh, because you would see them. Um, there, were, there were functions and places that people would be. There was a place called the Blacktop that was at the, at the end of Clay Street and John where we'd go and play basketball and you, you meet people and you talk to them. And it was a, a sense of community. Um, there are very few places there where there are gathering points where you see that. This park would be one of those spots. The, the spray park would be a park where children can go it will be a park, a park where uh, families can go. It will be a park where you, you can have a social, um, uh, uh, like a social fabric dynamic. It's also, um, you know, we, we mention obesity all the time. We mention things of that sort. It's a place where kids can run around and, and have fun. Um, so yet I'm for affordable housing, you know, 100%. Uh, I can tell you, you know, <laughs> without stopping, I just don't think that this program that we were um, 
that we were trying to negotiate with at this time um, has to be a any way saying that we're not for affordable housing, any way say that we don't appreciate affordable housing, it just was, was not the point. Um, the, the point that we had was that we were, we were starting um, with, with monies from the county, we were starting with monies from the town, and it was a great, great fix at the time with expanding Mary Moss Park. And I know some people may like the old pool, but the old pool is not the, the, the pool of today. Um, there's so many factors in regard to germs and bacteria and so forth. That's not what you want to have today. And we're looking at the future. We're looking at families. We're looking at kids. We're looking at things of the future. And I think that in order to do that, I think that this will be an asset for the entire community, not something that's negative, but an asset. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm for the, the project. I know that um, you know, it's a affordable uh, housing issue here, but I'm, I'm for affordable housing, but I'm for this project at this time. It, it's not just affordable housing. It's also, uh, that was one suggested use for it. It really is all about, his, it's also about historic preservation. And um, it's felt that this is one of the better uh, um, houses and you know, a, a good representation of, of a building of its type of that era. So um, this this was passed out at Historic Preservation. I don't know, you, you obviously know the building, but um, you can just pass it along. This is, I'll also pass along the um, New Jersey Office of Historic Preservation Historic Sites Inventory. Um, this individual structure survey form tells you a little bit about the building. Um, from a historic perspective. So using it for affordable housing was only one option if we saved it, if we can save it. So, uh, you know, it, it was just serendipitous that this came up while we were considering Mary Moss Park. We can still refurbish Mary Moss Park and do what we were going to do without it. It seemed like a nice idea to have additional space. We could have a more, um, you know, elaborate, uh, we could have shade structure, we could have, you know, maybe some tables, and it just allowed us to do a little bit more than we would be able to do on a much smaller footprint. But, um, y y you know, I, I think Rec can go ahead on, and operate in the Mary Ma, uh, you know, just in the current footprint as well. So, uh, Lance is absolutely right about the, the that old pool. It really has to be drained every day, and it needs a lifeguard, and um, you know, Spray Park wouldn't need it, wouldn't have the maintenance associated with it. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to say about it, but the water's not, there's no filtration in that old um, pool. And there have been a number, apparently when they built those, there were a number of them built around the community, and I think most of them have been taken up. Where else, there, there was one, I think there was one at Harrison Park previously. Maybe, yeah. So they, they've been all taken up over time. So anyway. Um, are there any other um, questions from council before we open up the public hearing? Yeah, I, I'm, I apologize if this, I'm still trying to get my head around what we're doing today and what, what that, what action if we adopt, what that might preclude. I mean, tonight are we just saying we're buying it? We're not committing to, we're not making a decision about what to do with it, right? Or no? I believe that's right, but I'm going to ask Vicki to just I mean, because I mean, I'm just, because I'm for a lot is coming us now, and it seems, I mean, my inclination is we need to think about all these things, but, but, um, but I want to understand what, what, what we, what we might do tonight and what that would mean and what that might preclude. So the, the ordinance that's before you tonight is the funding mechanism. So it's basically um, dedicating $600,000 towards the purchase of the property. Um, the ordinance does speak to the demolition of the existing structure. However, it's not the definite, it's not to say that the structure has to be demolished. It was just articulated in the ordinance as one of the expenses that was included in the purchase and acquisition price. Well, that answer your question, question, Ms. Howard? What, well, what money is involved? The, I mean, was the 600? This is the town was putting forward the $600,000. We, I, I don't know if the appraisals have come back yet, but the county has pledged um, half of the purchase price, the ultimate purchase price. So I mean, if we use it for the park or? Uh, that was, the, they're, they're, they're pledging it because they have pledged money 
towards the park improvements and they saw this land acquisition this is how it was pitched to them as being a potential partner is that this was going to um, enhance the park and you know I'd also say too I know that when we've had open space opportunities over the past couple years um, that you know we do hear that there really hasn't been and there hasn't been any acquisitions in the former borough period since the establishment no open space money has been used to acquire properties in the former borough because those are it's just the the land is really scarce and it's it's hard to find it and it's you know I I agree it's like I think affordable housing is important there's a lot of beautiful historic structures um, but I think the other thing in this neighborhood it's one of the densest neighborhoods we have and there's a lot of children there and having a really great park is also really valuable and I think that was the intention of this project I know that rec has been working really hard on it and I think that the county um, is excited about it too so that was I think that that was the content of our previous discussions and and I'm really supportive I you know I've been talking about how um, acquiring open space uh, you know small pieces of open space in the former borough and I fully support the idea but I am taken aback by some of the comments that we've heard and I'm I w would rather before committing you know maybe table this so that we can have a discussion a little more discussion with the neighbors Mr. Miller. question for uh, Vicki do we put the the funding for this at risk if it's you if the the property is used for some purpose other than a park in other words are, are we if, if we proceed with this and don't use the property for a park are we putting the funding at risk um, potentially the county funding I'm um, not the attorney unfortunately who's handling the project in the office so I'm not sure as to what the agreement was but I do generally know that the agreement was um, that the county was going to go 50% um, be for open space purposes so I'm not sure if the municipality was to go forward and preserve it historically and restore the property if that funding would still be available to the municipality I guess I'd, I'd like to know with some certainty that we're not putting another three hundred thousand dollar hole in our budget I don't think we have that certainty that's why I think we should table it okay well even if we table it um, we are gonna hold the public hearing tonight I mean, that's what yes absolutely um, so I'd like to open up the public hearing um, and Miss Cherry uh, Kip Cherry 24 Dempsey Avenue I think there's been a colossal communication breakdown and I think that's where we are right now um, as you all were thinking about this park um, the idea of an historic district was also moving forward within the neighborhood and uh, they formed a committee called the uh, Witherspoon uh, Jackson Historic District Committee and that committee um, approached the Historic Preservation uh, Commission about um, proceeding and so uh, the reason we were all here tonight was to um, support that resolution and which was passed by the Historic Preservation Commission tonight and will be coming to you uh, for some funds and uh, to proceed forward with um, doing the research and finalizing an application for an historic district so that's the first thing the second thing is that um, you might not all be aware but in 1994 the whole area was it was called the Witherspoon John Street a neighborhood it was declared eligible to be on the National Register so I'm not sure that everybody was kind of focused that much on the historic importance of the community of the neighborhood um, and in the 80s there was a major um, survey done and that's the you have a copy of that floating around there and this house was part of that survey that is it was um, identified individually as an important historic place um, and one of the neat things about this house is that it's changed very little from the original so that's one of the reasons it's so special is that um, the original scroll work is still in front of the house the original porch um, the house was originally um, a home and a liquor store they were um, owned by mr. Tash and that's another component of this is that it was an Italian uh, it was owned by an Italian person and so that draws this concept of the historic nature of the neighborhood the african-american and the italian uh, which are both very important components of the history of the neighborhood so uh, 
we, as we were preparing for this uh, discussion on the historic district, we found out about 31-33 uh, Lytle Street being on the uh, agenda for the Historic Preservation Commission. And so everybody uh, did their homework and uh, quickly realized that uh, we, we were talking about demolishing a house of considerable historic value, a house that is very critical to uh, the historic district because of what it represents and also because of the edge it creates on Lytle Street. Um, and um, also, um, the, port, the park itself is, uh, is part of the concept of the neighborhood, too, in terms of, of scale. And so, uh, for, the, for a whole lot of reasons, and the fact that nobody in the neighborhood even knew about this, there was immediate consternation. And uh, Sally, I um, mean, Shirley Satterfield went out and took an image, and that's that picture that just got uh, moved around. So you can see what a handsome uh, house it is for, for what it represents. Remember, we're talking about a neighborhood um, that's been through a lot in its history, and I think that the members of the neighborhood want to want to be sure that we don't forget that history, that it's not just papered over, that it's not just changed, that there are structural representations of that history remaining in the neighborhood. So um, I think the current real concern now is the word demolition. And what if Mr. Barsky is just waiting for this ordinance to pass and he plans to dem demolish tomorrow? Uh, we did have an instance on Alexander Street where there were several houses demolished without building uh, demolish, uh, demolition permits because there was an understanding that de demolition permits were being applied for. And so in that particular instance, uh, the contractor went out and demolished the houses before the permits were there. So I think that there's an immediate concern about communicating to Mr. Barsky that, in fact, the town may well want to preserve the house and, uh, and he shouldn't demolish it immediately. Let him know that because things happen very quickly with some developers and, and he's uh, an example of someone who's moved very quickly uh, with demolition. So um, and really all he's doing is uh, apparently ca carrying out what you all have com communicated with him already, that you just want the land, you don't want the house. So <laughs> he has no reason to be concerned about demolition. But I, I think that um, uh, the neighborhood and the historic preservation community are extremely concerned about maintaining this house. And I think that um, affordable housing would be a really cool use of this house. And, and I, I realize that we're sticking a new idea into the queue. There are other houses already being considered and all that sort of thing, um, and I don't know how flexible everybody can be, but it would be a very good uh, way to use this, this house. So um, I think that's all I, I had to say, and um, we will be getting um, a uh, resolution from the uh, Stark Preservation Commission. They not only voted to uh, send the resolution for moving forward with the historic district to you, but uh, they also passed a resolution opposing the demolition of the house, and they feel very strongly that this house should remain in place. So I think that this was a big communication gap. I think that um, everyone will appreciate all the work that's been done in creating a park, but um, I just, I, I just come with a shock. And I think that the neighborhood would like to be uh, involved in, uh, in what's in the park and, in, you know, everything. And uh, so I think there's some communication to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I could just clarify, my understanding is that it's not that the township wants the house demolished that the um, developer has already put in demolition permits and that's when this was brought to the township's attention or I'm sorry the municipality's attention yeah no thank you I, I think the concern is that, sorry, uh, that you know that there'd be an immediate communication to Barsky not to tear that house down I mean wouldn't that be a shame if we all woke up tomorrow and found out that he had gone ahead and torn it down so um, I mean I think you know whether it would be informal because there's no official decision by the town or whatever, but to tell them to hold off. And, and don't wait on this. Believe me, things happen very quickly. Okay, thank you. I encouraged them twice before when you were in the other meeting to do just that. And I encourage you a third time to please be in contact with him and take no action on his, his uh, submission of the uh, demolition uh, permits. Um, there is a really great park in the neighborhood in fact, there are two great parks in the neighborhood. One is called Mary Moss Park. The other one is called Community Park. I haven't done the measurements myself, but the primary users of the wading pool during the summertime, and I say primary, not exclusive, but the primary users of the wading park in the summertime are the children, the toddlers, the young people, 
from the nursery school. I haven't walked it myself to measure the distance between that uh, institution and Mary Moss Park uh, and uh, the distance between the nursery school and community park, uh, but it's not that much farther. Uh, if there's a desire for a sprinkler type sort of uh, 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 thing, <laughs> I can't remember the word. For spray ground. Spray ground. <laughs> um, number one. Number two, uh, is the waiting pool unsafe and unsanitary? Has anyone? Yes. Some people have been. Yes, the health department. Yeah. They've yeah. determined that people have gotten sick. OK. Well, what can you do about that short of eliminating the pool? What can you do about it? I think that there have got to be other remedies that you could come up with uh, than you know, eliminating that, that pool. Uh, I don't want to go into the details, or I, you know, I would love to hear the details at some point, uh, and I'm sorry that anybody has gotten sick there, but uh, uh, again, I think the creation of this, uh, the changing of the, the uh, park as it is in such a dramatic way, drastic way, really will destroy a good bit of the history of the park. And so there's got to be some other medium ground that can be uh, uh, taken to ensure the safety and the health of children who use the pool and not destroy uh, so much of the history that's there. Um, a question that I have, the $600,000 that you're budgeting is for the purchase of the property itself? Without the house. Without the house. Without the improvement. So Correct. We're, we're paying $600,000 for, now maybe I only have here well, that, the that's one just lot. The amount we're, that's just the amount that we're um, out, uh, authorizing. We don't until we get the, um, we're waiting on the appraisals. We're hoping the appraisals will come in lower than that. And well, the, the it's county assessed, pays it's for assessed. Food. The taxable land is $185,000, and the taxable building is 94.8, with a total of 279.8. Uh, I'm not sure how much Mr. Barsky paid uh, the estate of, uh, of uh, Mr. Tash. I, I think the other, the other issue is that it was subsequently subdivided, and I believe in that, or it has a potential, and that raises the value because it's now two properties instead of one. Uh, well, still, I think the better use of the piece of land that's there alongside the park is for some form of housing whether it's affordable housing or a mix of affordable and market housing. That's my, my opinion as a neighbor, as someone who is concerned about affordable housing, but also as a realtor. You have land behind the house that I believe is also owned by the housing town. Authority. The housing authority. It's owned by the housing authority. Yeah. And are you in conversation with the housing authority yeah. about yes. creative ways in which you can create? affordable housing in areas of town. Well, that might be another creative use of the sparse land that is available for development here in Princeton that could combine uh, you know, several levels or at least a couple levels of uh, housing and perhaps cover your cost of $600,000 if that's what it winds up being. But um, Again, I think uh, uh, what I see, uh, the utilization of the park, is that it's used primarily by uh, young kids, uh, the nursery school, the uh, 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 Princeton uh, young achievers come over in the afternoon sometime. They're all supervised. And yes, indeed, neighbors from around the 
the streets of the Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood come. A lot, a lot of baby carriages and a lot of toddlers, and they're not necessarily, they're not from, only from the nursery school or from Witherspoon Jackson. It is, it is well utilized just as it is, and not only during the summertime. So, again, I think uh, uh, a better use for that whole piece of land there, as opposed to expanding the park, in this situation, in this location, would be housing of some sort. Thank you. Could I, Hendricks, can I ask you a question since you're in real estate? Do, did you know that house was on the market before Barsky bought it? Um, I did, and I tried to get in contact with uh, uh, the, uh, the heir, and uh, uh, I think I finally got in contact with them maybe a few days after he had sold it. He had sold it. Yep. Was it on? Was it on the market, no. or how did you? You, you just heard about it in the, through the neighborhood that it was. Yeah, uh, going from to be the neighbor available. across the street. Uh, yep. I mean, because surely we all would have liked to have known before. Yeah. Definitely. Someone else. Definitely. I did got call their Mr. Barsky and ask him if he would sell it to me, but uh, <laughs> maybe I'll call him again. <laughs> well, Hendricks, can we ask? You'll be in touch with us when there are other properties in the neighborhood. I, I mean, if another situation like that were to come up, of a house that has been identified as a historic house, that would be good to keep your eyes and ears open. Mayor, my apologies to you. I did not note that item 10 was the ultimate discussion we're into now. Thank Councilperson Kremler for also advising us. I listened to a moment ago the fact that the, there are any number of young folk who would use that park who I assume the intent was to say they lived in the area. We've let three generations go by with absolutely no improvement. There were just as many youngsters, maybe a few more. I don't know what precipitated this, but maybe Lance can answer that for me. But Lance, believe me, there were just as many youngsters when there was a failure on the part of the borough to do anything to improve the park. There was a reference made earlier to the wading pool, which was eliminated at the old Harrison Street Park. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And obviously there was some reference made to the fact that it may be unhealthy. Well, it might have been unhealthy for the kids who were there then. Is it all of a sudden we're concerned about the health of whom and what? I urge you, please, don't perpetuate this pattern of discrimination and selective appliance of your concern. Please, save that house. It is historic, in our opinion. And the need for a remedy in the waiting pool is certainly much less than the cost that you're projecting. I heard the administrator earlier talk about your projected budget, and I don't know whether that two and a third percent increase would apply to taxes or not. Let's find a way, I think. Well, I'll make a suggestion. I seldom do. We had a task force to just identify several municipal properties. Maybe a trade-off with Mr. Barsky and let him take one of those properties and we can preserve what we have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Good evening. Uh, my name is Earl McQueen. I'm a resident of Princeton off and on for over, well, si just over 60 years now. Uh, I'm very familiar with the entire Princeton neighborhood, Princeton town. I have um, lived on Birch Avenue, Lee Avenue, Plainsboro, Trenton, Hampton, Virginia. So I know, and to make a long story short, I'm well aware of the town. I used to use the pool when I was small, if you can believe that. Um, I support the Willispoon Jackson neighborhood and its concerns for that particular piece of property that was owned by Grover Tash. Um, I think if you take a look at Lee Avenue, 
two properties in particular, Cinerino's Lounge and the property that was uh, owned by uh, Mr. Hatcher on Lee Avenue right next to the, the row of stores just, I guess that's on the east side of uh, uh, John Street. Those houses were uh, once, like I said, a bar and a, and, a, and a residence above that was converted, I believe, back into a single family home. And there was also Mr. Hatcher's house that was a double house that when he passed away, I think they uh, went back and renovated that house. I would suggest, as my um, co-comrades in the Witherspoon Jackson uh, Historic Preservation Group, that you really do consider trying to do all that you can to maintain that piece of property with those residences that are there now and try to make them affordable houses for the future. You know, Princeton, I've lived here. I can tell you all the people, all the people who lived up and down Birch Avenue, every one of them who has passed away has, their families have decided to sell their homes. Um, and there's no, you know, continuation that used to previously exist. And this is something that I think as far as the African-American people in the neighborhood, as the people get older, they move them over to um, Princeton Community Village, they got rid of their homes. As soon as they got over to Princeton Community Village, a lot of them passed away because they were just like in a different environment is what we believe to have happened. Um, I would, you know, like I said, I support what Witherspoon Jackson is trying to do. I've worked with Witherspoon Jackson over the years when they were buying up properties with the help of, you know, personal, uh, uh, with people who would make donations to help them buy houses. And, you know, it was a really good thing that they were doing then. And unfortunately, it's fallen by the wayside. I would, again, suggest that, you know, do whatever you can to make that happen, you know, to keep the town historic as it was and, you know, keep it moving. I would love for to see more African-American people coming to Princeton, but it's not happening. It's not happening. And uh, if they could, I would really like to see them come in. But in the meantime, you know, if it doesn't happen for them, let it happen for people who can, you know, at a lower cost than a million dollars for a house that I've been seeing in Trenton Times and in the packet. Let them come in and try to live in Princeton and, uh, you know, enjoy the, you know, reap the benefits of Princeton. Thank you. Okay, I wanna bring it back to council now. Um, there was a suggestion that we table, so I just want to, um, Vicki, is it better for me not to close the public hearing then and leave it open, or what do you recommend if the, if, if the consensus is to table? I think the last, last time we did that, we just, just opened the public open hearing. And I close the public hearing. Open. Yeah, I would, I would recommend that if you're going to table it, you leave the public hearing open so that way the next time um, it's before the council, if there's any other further comments or consideration that it can continue. Okay, and then um, I just wanted to see if there was any time restrictions. Um, Deanna, do you know if, um, I know our next meeting on the 23rd is going to be pretty full with the budget, so we might want to hold it over just because there's other issues. Um, I don't know if they, you know, we need to go back to the county or whatever to, to do it for that April meeting, but I don't know if there's a time consideration there. Uh, Mayor, if I, if I can just comment, uh, I hear from the Barskis on a regular basis as to what the, what the status is because they're anxious to move, move ahead one way or another, so I would urge some sort of a decision be made sooner rather than later. Okay. I, I think maybe it's important... I mean, I don't know if we can discuss this right now, but I don't know if it's at all realistic to think that we could turn this into a 
an affordable unit. I, I don't, th I mean, we just ha do <laughs> not have the money right now, right? Is that correct? Well, I, I think that the, the issue um, at hand, there's a combination of a few things. One is we just um, <laughs> went into this major affordable housing purchasing recently, and it puts us in a bad spot at this point we, um, for affordable housing dollars. But um, even if we had the dollars, so it, it would, it, this is ex not the kind of thing we usually would well, do. We, because well, we, would, we wouldn't buy two units for 600000 Right, and, and that need, obviously need tons of renovation. We, we just wouldn't have, affordable housing just wouldn't, wouldn't have done that. But, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say table it, but uh, if we table it, what are we tabling it to achieve at our next meeting? That's the only thing I just need well, to I, know. I, I mean, besides affordable housing, I mean, what other options are there? Could we, say, preserve it as a historic site and then sell it on the market? I mean, some people were saying, oh, we could sell it on the market, but obviously we can't do it without some kind of re restriction or somebody else is just going to buy it and tear it down. I mean, if well, we had... Well, I think, I think that, that that defeats the purpose of the affordable housing uh, folks if you buy it and we sell it to anyone. Um, to no, I know. It, that, that's, I think what the, the key was is if we bought it, if we sold it, that we have it so that it would be affordable housing if, if it could be. I think that's what they were... Well, so could we buy it at the price that we have it, don't fix it up, and sell it with a deed restriction as an affordable unit? If we buy it for six hundred thousand, and if we sell it for three hundred thousand, I mean that that's a, a big a big difference in cost. Right. That, that's what I'm saying. It. So there is, is there just zero option for affordable housing unit? I mean, should we just well, face the music? Well, yeah, I, I don't know if it's zero. I mean, maybe there's dollars that we haven't looked at that we can possibly find. Bob Kaiser knows how to find money all the time. Or does this become a higher priority than something we have in the pipeline? Or is everything committed? I mean, I guess that's the question. No, everything's committed. I think that we've com we've committed to. We basically commit. We've basically signed on on those those deals. So one issue is, do we have the money to do this? I mean, we don't. We we can't get it from affordable housing from the trust. But are there other sources, and for what purpose? I mean, we would be setting a precedent. You know, something you describe, like all of a sudden we're getting into the rehab business. You know, right. I know. I. I mean, I. I do, but I do feel like maybe that we do, we should have a neighborhood meeting. I think they, there is a neighborhood meeting set up, right, for Saturday, so. Well, it's not us having it, I mean. Right, I know, but I mean, at least, okay, but I, I would like to get more input from the neighborhood and hear some, I mean, I, I'm hesitant to go ahead with this right now. Well, okay, so, so we don't do, here's one possibility. We don't approve this tonight, and Barsky says, you know what? I I'm sick of you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm building my two houses, and there's nothing really. W we would have no reason. Uh, we would ha have no ability to deny him the demolition permits, would we? Or he has them, or whatever. But it, whether he, he has, has them not been issued the demolition permits, but we would have, we would have no reason to deny them if he. Right. So, so then Barsky could say, you know, I'm I'm tired of you. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take down the house and go ahead with my own plans to build the t two houses. So there's a risk there too. There's a risk that we don't save the house. There's a risk that we don't do this and we don't end up with the property. And I, I mean, I think it would be. So what do like, you think, Joe? Because you, you were at the meet at the historic preservation well, meeting today. I mean, you know, they're very upset, and they feel very strongly about this particular building. And I mean, but do you uh, think we, it's worth tabling at least? Or? Well, I, I think there's this possible outcome, which would be the worst of all, and that is that Barsky goes ahead and tears it down and builds his two McMansion-type houses, and then we don't have the property for uh, recreation, and we don't have it, and we haven't saved it either. How quickly, sorry to ask a process question, how quickly do we move on um, demolition um, applications? And, and once he's filed, would, is there an issue of like a takings if we do something? Where he is at this point is, is he's held, held off getting the subdivision approval, uh, knowing that uh, uh, the town was interested in purchasing the property. So I would think that he would then go ahead to proceed to get the subdivision approval, uh, whether he would uh, 
want to move to uh, demolish prior to that subdivision approval or, or not? I don't know. I could could certainly speak with them. No, I'm shaking my head because uh, <laughs> I, I, I really don't see a way out of this dilemma. I mean, if, if we table the motion, we run the risk of Mr. Barsky acting on his own, and before we can meet again and take action on this, or even find out if, if we can find the money to purchase for affordable housing, it's all gone, because uh, Barsky has acted. Uh, we, you know, the, the only thing we know with certainty is that we have the money to purchase it for the park. We, we don't know whether or not that money can be diverted to another use, and it's going to take us a few days to work that through with the county. We, we don't know where the money would come from for another use. Uh, and, and Barsky has not been hesitant about knocking buildings down in the past. So uh, 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 I guess we could purchase it for the park and then try and turn it around to another use or run the risk of it not being there Monday morning. There's also some, um, there is a problem if we, not a problem, but a challenge. There is a problem, uh, challenge, <laughs> if we buy the property with a house on it and then we were to find out maybe the house is in such terrible shape and, you know, it can't, it's not within our scope to refurbish it. Um, if we've, once we've purchased the house with public funds I, and it's identified in this historic um, overlay, then, then, then we've got a complicated process for taking the house down, I think, if that's what we decide it's just not salvageable. So that's another consideration. Um, okay, Kip, and then um, I do want to bring it back to council after your I comments. just want to say that the neighborhood would like to meet with the mayor immediately on this. I'm supposed to get the soonest state that I can with the mayor to meet, number one. Number two, they're willing to meet with Barsky. Number three, they're willing to meet with the county. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of pot stirring that can occur to try to find the money to do this and to get it back on the track that the neighborhood wants. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if this is helpful, but it seems to me that um, a, a slight delay, I, I'm not hearing from Mr. Kaiser that, a, that there's a huge risk and a slight delay and that we owe, it to, we owe it to the neighborhood to meet and explain it. But I don't want us, I wouldn't want us doing that to raise expectations because I really don't see that there's a way out here. That's the concern is that mm -hmm. we're not going to have the money to, to, to rehab and do affordable housing. Um, I, you know, I, I don't see a way out, but I but I sense that there's not yet. We, we, we need another step in community consultation before we get that for people to appreciate that we have considered those options. I don't, you know, I'm the... Yeah, I will second that. I, you know, okay. I okay, well, um, we'll I'll, I'll say then we'll um, continue the public hearing um, to the meeting of March 23rd, which is our next meeting um, in two weeks. And um, we'll, we'll see what we can um, learn between now and then and what our options are. So can we, I, I would just, just um, with what Kip was saying, I guess, could we contact Barsky tomorrow or Tuesday and see what the mission time frame is? Could we do that? And, and I, I think the, the other message to him is that I think no matter what, I just want to make sure I'm, this is a question that this is the sense of council. No matter what, the municipality is interested in the property. Um, and it's just we have to work out some of these issues, but we want the option of the house there. Is that, yeah. is that fair? So it's not like we're getting cold feet. So, so he should, and, and, and we, we understand he wants right. to move quickly, and we're trying to do what we can to move quickly. And hopefully the neighborhood will understand why we have to do it that way because right now he has, he wants to tear it down and he can. 
So right. I think he wants to probably close no matter what. Right. Um, but I think that. I mean, but if we, if he doesn't sell it, he can tear it down and make a, a all this money on it. So he wants to do that. I mean, so that's. Bob, do you think he's going to be amenable to that discussion, or do you, I mean, I hate to put you on the spot, but do you feel like we can buy some time or not? Uh, my sense is we can buy limited limited time. Limited March twenty yeah. third time. Yeah, I I, th I think we should revisit this issue the twenty third. Work to g gather information. What I would suggest is we work to g get in the house with our building department, uh, get a sense as to what it would take yep. to Excellent. really yeah. rehab the house to determine uh, what problems it has and s structurally and look for these okay, not okay and so forth. And possible. F funding uh, from other sources mm -hmm. okay thank you, know, you. I, I will say that that six hundred thousand dollars plus the cost of rehabilitating the building is a lot to pay for two units of affordable housing much more than we we've ever paid for two units of affordable housing in the past I think we've uh, we've stretched ourselves sometimes to go to about two hundred thousand dollars a unit but never to uh, <laughs> 300,000 per unit or 400 or 500,000 per unit. Uh, I think it's fair to tell Mr. Barsky we want the property and we want it for either purpose if we can make it work. And okay. the, that one way or another, the municipality will act to purchase the property. But we've got to have a little bit more time to figure out if there is an alternative to the park. Okay. Hi, Bernie, I just, uh, I think you make a good point about the cost of that affordable housing, looking at that unit. If we were to pay 600 plus the rehab, it, it's almost, it, it would be a lot. And it, you know, spending that money on two units, there are people that aren't being served by our Easy. choice of spending that money. That amount of money could go further in, in helping more people, and that's what we need to think about. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for everybody coming out tonight on this and to be continued on the 23rd, and I'll be in touch with whoever wants to meet between now and then. Um, okay. Um, our second public hearing for this evening, um, an ordinance by Princeton regulating parking along portions of Cleveland Lane and amending the code of the borough of Princeton, New Jersey, 1974. This is really more of a house cleaning ordinance than anything else. I don't know if there's any questions about it. Ms. And I, I'm, I'm recusing myself because I live right around the corner. Okay. Thank you. No. I was going to move it. Okay. Second. Okay. Moved by Ms. Butler and seconded by Ms. Howard. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Do you do you need to open a public hearing? Or, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm so, I, I jumped the gun. When no, I, I appreciate that. It. I'm going to open up the public hearing on this ordinance. Is there anybody who'd like to speak to it? Cleveland Lane? All right, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's been moved by Ms. Butler, seconded by Ms. Howard. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Howard? Yes. Ms. Crow Miller recused herself. Mr. B Mr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Liverman? Yes. Ms. Butler? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Um, ordinance passes. Um, next we have resolution 15-84, emergency temporary budgets. Are there any questions about this resolution? And if not, is there a motion? So, second. And moved by Mr. Miller and seconded by Mr. Liverman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The resolution passes. Next is resolution 1585, Carter Road multi-party agreement. Mercer County Partnership Grant Program. This is um, um, uh, just a resolution of a, a land partnership. Princeton's actually not putting any money um, into this deal, but we're helping to facilitate it. Um, and is there a motion? So moved. It's moved by Ms. Butler, seconded by Ms. Krimmler. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, resolution passes unanimously. Next is 15-86, appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. So moved. Second. It's moved by Ms. Kremler, seconded by Mr. Liverman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, resolution passes unanimously. And next is 15-87, 
Award of Contract for Alexander Street and DNR Canal Towpath, Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons Installation to Orchard Holdings, LLC, in the amount of $26,225,000. And um, so moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Kremler and seconded by Mr. Miller. All in favor? Okay. Wait, I have a quick question on this. Are we paying, is this the entirety of this installation or does this, are we paying for this whole thing? Yes, we are. And uh, are we putting in what the university has at, uh, up further on Alexander? Is that what this is? Yes, it's the uh, same type of installation, correct. I know. Do, do, is, this, is this state of the art? Is this what everybody is doing in these? It, it is state of the art. The rapid flash and beacons were just approved by uh, the MUTCD, I guess, perhaps a year and a half or so ago. And they're activated by the side of the road? I mean, you push a button? You, you push a button. The the units that the university have ins has installed, there's a motion detector right. that they put in place. Uh, these do not call for the motion detector. It's actually you push a button. Is any of what we used before usable? The, so the, uh, is it the same button that we've got down there? Is it all new? The uh, foundations are used. All the electrical connections are, will be will be reused. So we can we can use everything except we have to take the the signage down, the the, the flashing uh, uh, lights that were there previously, change that out, and then take out the uh, uh, in pavement uh, lighting that was installed. So there'll be nothing in paving. It's just on the sides. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the resolution passes unanimously. Next, we come to the consent agenda, which contains items of a routine nature, um, voted on by a single vote. Um, are there any items on the consent agenda anybody would like removed? Seeing none, is there a motion? Second. Moved by Mr. Miller and seconded by Ms. Cronella. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, consent agenda passes unanimously, and now is there a motion to move into closed session? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it resolved by, this, uh, by the mayor and council of Princeton, this body will now convene into a closed session that will be limited only to consideration of an item or items with respect to which the public may be excluded pursuant to Section 7B of the Open Public Meetings Act the general nature of the subject or subjects to be discussed in said session is as follows.